Hi there everybody, it's so good to speak to you all again. Hope you're getting through this summertime, this summer holiday really well. Our psalm today is Psalm 72, where the psalmist says, Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. He will judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. The mountains will bring prosperity to the people, the hills, the fruit of righteousness. He will defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. He will crush the oppressor. He will endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon, through all generations. He will be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days the righteous will flourish, prosperity will abound till the moon is no more. He will rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The desert tribes will bow down before him and his enemies will lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of distant shores will bring tribute to him. The kings of Sheba and Seba will present him gifts. All kings will bow down to him and all nations will serve him. For he will deliver the needy who cry out the afflicted who have no one to help. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence, for precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given to him. May people ever pray for him and bless him all day long. Let corn abound throughout the land. On the tops of the hills may it sway. Let its fruit flourish like Lebanon, let it thrive like the grass of the field. May his name endure for ever, may it continue as long as the sun. All nations will be blessed through him, and they will call him blessed. Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does marvellous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and Amen. This concludes the prayers of David, son of Jesse. This is a psalm about the king, apparently King Solomon, a king of peace, but possibly with input from his father, King David, who was a king of war. It's a prayer that the king might be endowed with justice, that he might judge the people in righteousness, defend the afflicted, save the children, crush the oppressor. What a prayer. It's a prayer that he might reign forever, that his reign might refresh the land and see great prosperity. It's a prayer that his rule might extend to the ends of the earth, the desert tribes and enemies might bow down before him, the kings of Tarshish in the western Mediterranean and distant shores, Sheba and Seba, might bring gifts. It's a prayer that he will deliver the needy and the afflicted, that he will take pity on the weak and the needy. A prayer that he may live for a long time, receiving gold from Sheba and be blessed by his people. A prayer that corn may abound, even on the tops of the hills, the most unlikely places. That fruit may flourish like Lebanon. It's a prayer that all nations may be blessed through him. Praise God who alone can make all this happen. The psalmist concludes, Amen and Amen. And as we continue through this great psalm, which envisages a reign of peace and justice and prosperity, a reign which has as one of its chief tasks the care of the afflicted, the needy, the children, the most vulnerable in society, a kingdom which extends from sea to sea, a king whose authority is recognised by other kings, a king who is blessing all the nations as we continue 
So we realise to our amazement that this psalm is not merely speaking of Solomon or David. This psalm is speaking of King Jesus, Son of David, Son of Man, Son of God. This psalm is describing the glorious reign of Jesus, not simply in one or two places and one or two hearts, but across the world. This is a psalm, a song, not about a local king, but about a universal king, a king who will rule a kingdom from which all injustice, iniquity, affliction, need, oppression, violence have been banished, a kingdom in which all will matter, all will be of value, all will be recognised. None will be missed. In this kingdom, not only the people, but also the land will prosper. And can I draw your attention especially to verse 6, where the psalmist says, He will be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth, The Hebrew for mown field is the same as the Hebrew for shorn sheep. And the idea of rain falling on shorn sheep reminds us of Gideon. You remember that he is the one who puts out a fleece and prays that in the morning the fleece might be damp and the ground dry as a sign that Almighty God is present. As we hear today of appalling acts of injustice and violence happening across the world, as we've just heard of the terrible events in Beirut in Lebanon just a couple of days ago, are we not led by this psalm to pray with renewed vigour? Lord, may thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. In the early 19th century, James Montgomery wrote a wonderful hymn based on this psalm. If you know the tune, why don't you sing along as I read? Hail to the Lord's anointed, great David's greater son. Hail in the time appointed. His reign on earth begun. He comes to break oppression, to set the captive free, to take away transgression and rule in equity. He comes with help most speedy to those who suffer wrong, to save the poor and needy and help the weak be strong, to give them songs for sighing, their darkness turned to light, whose souls condemned and dying are precious in his sight. He shall come down like showers upon the fruitful earth, and love, joy, hope like flowers, spring in his path to birth. Before him on the mountains shall peace the herald go, and righteousness in fountains from hill to valley flow. Kings shall bow down before him, and golden incense bring. All nations shall adore him, his praise all people sing. To him shall praise unceasing and daily vows ascend, his kingdom still increasing, a kingdom without end. In all the world victorious, he on his throne shall rest, from age to age more glorious, all blessing and all blessed. The tide of time shall never his covenant remove, his name shall stand forever his changeless name of love. Following on from that glorious psalm and that wonderful hymn, how can we pray other than to say, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. <laughs>